source of piperine, a molecule that does not do much on its own but can inhibit enzymes that would attack other molecules. Due to this, it is ingested alongside some supplements to increase their absorption rates and is almost always consumed with curcumin. Black pepper is a spice commonly used in many areas of the world for flavor. Through its active component piperine, black pepper is able to modify supplement and drug metabolism. The Danish chemist Hans Christian Ørsted first isolated piperine from black pepper in 1819. It was later discovered in other piper species such as long pepper and West African pepper, piperganines. Piperine was first synthesized in 1882 by mixing piperidine and piperoil chloride. A process in the liver called glucuronidation, which attaches a molecule, glucuronide, to drugs to signal for their urinary excretion, is inhibited with piperine. This process prevents excessive levels of drugs and supplements in the body, but sometimes inhibits all uptake and renders some supplements useless. In the scenario of piperine ingestion, excretion of supplements is hindered and certain drugs and supplements can bypass this regulatory stage. The usage of black pepper extract for the purpose of enhancing the absorption of other supplements that are glucuronidated, for example, curcumin, tends to call for 20 mg of the bioactive piperidine. There exists preliminary evidence that black pepper as a food substance poses carcinogenic effects via some procarcinogenic constituents such as saffron and tannins, and some terpene compounds. These procarcinogenic effects were noted with topical application. These effects, however, were not noted with oral ingestion despite rodent hypersensitivity to piperine. It is generally recognized as safe for human consumption. Safety first. Do not start taking any chemical treatment without protecting yourself. You must first protect your face and hands. Proper lab rats you will wear glasses and gloves. The environment you work should be well ventilated. Flammable and explosive chemicals must be stored away from heat sources and electrical sparks. Please do not apply this experiment that you will watch a little later without necessary laboratory equipment and chemistry knowledge. Always avoid harming yourself and your environment. What do we need? 1 liter isopropyl alcohol 6 grams of potassium hydroxide 100 grams of fine powdered black pepper Let's start with microwave assisted piperine extraction. First, set the microwave oven, you used in your kitchen to between 100 and 300 watts. Do not forget, we do not need excess power. It is desirable that the microwaves break down the cell walls of the plant and provide extraction in a shorter time. Wear gloves and goggles now. Do not forget that potassium hydroxide is an abrasive substance, and can damage your skin, and eyes. On the other hand, Alcohol is very volatile and flammable chemical. The operations we will follow during the piperine extraction process are 1. Extraction of black pepper using isopropyl alcohol with microwave support. 2. Concentrating of the extract to 10% thick by distillation. 3. Cleaning of the concentrated extract from impurities like fat and fatty acids. 4. Isolating piperine from the clean concentrated extract using solvent precipitation method. 5. Separation of piperine crystals by vacuum filtration and drying.
100 grams of black pepper powder is put into a 500 milliliter conical flask. 500 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol is added into the flask. And the flask's mouth is closed with a balloon. Never use a cork or hard cover. Because expanding alcohol vapor can cause the glass container to explode. Put the conical flask in the microwave oven. And adjust its power to 300 watts. Keep for one minute and then stop Owen. Shake for one minute to cool the solution. Repeat this process for 10 times. Do not allow the solution to overheat and overflow. Filter the solution and pour it into another container. Put 500 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol in the extraction flask, and repeat the same procedure mentioned above. Filter the solution again, and add it into the previous solution, obtained from first extraction. Finally, squeeze the remaining pulp in the conical extraction flask, and add it to the main solution. Approximately 600 milliliters of isopropanol extract will be obtained. After the solution has cooled down thoroughly, first, sieve it with a cotton filter, and pour into another clean flask. Then repeat the filtration process using coarse filter paper. Now we will begin the concentration process. We will concentrate about 600 milliliters of the solution we obtained with the previous procedure to about 10% of it. As a result, we will have an approximate 60 milliliter of concentrated extract. For this I use the vacuum distillation method. However, you can also do a simple distillation process. This solution we concentrated before, contains a lot of unnecessary substances too. And finally obtained piperine crystals will not be sufficiently pure without cleaning these unnecessary substances as much as possible. We will clean our solution from impurities like resin, oil and fatty acids. For this purpose we will prepare an equal amount of alcoholic base solution and then add it into the main solution to precipitate unnecessary substances. And then we will filter out this solution. Let us start. Prepare 60 milliliters of 10% potassium hydroxide solution. For this, put 6 grams of potassium hydroxide into 60 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol and mix thoroughly. It is not easy to solve potassium hydroxide in alcohol in a short time. For easy dissolution of potassium hydroxide you can find powder it before and use a magnetic stirrer and heater. Please do not forget to close the beaker with a struck film so that the alcohol does not fly away evaporating. And then, add this solution into the main solution and mix for 10 minutes.
At the end of the waiting, we will see unnecessary oily and sticky materials in the bottom of the beaker. We first pass the cooled solution through a cotton filter. And then using a coarse paper filter, we filter it again. Finally we have 120 milliliters of piperine solution clean from some impurities. Now it is the time to get the piperine crystals. Let's start by looking at the solubility property of the piperine. While piperine is dissolved in 1 liter of water in a difficult way, such as 40 milligrams, it is dissolved 1 gram in 50 milliliters of alcohol. In other words, the water insoluble piperine can soluble very easily in alcohol. We have used isopropyl alcohol during extraction process because we already knew this feature before. Well, next question. Can we isolate piperine using its insolubility in water? Yes. When we slowly add cold water into alcoholic solution, the polarity of the solution will rise, and the water insoluble piperine crystals begin to accumulate in the bottom of the beaker as a residue. We start processing with the dropper, and 500 milliliters of pure water, pre-chilled in the refrigerator. We slowly add water into the solution through the dropper. When each drop of water falls into alcoholic solution, we can see light yellow precipitates settling on the bottom of the beaker. This process should be continued dropwise without disturbing solution. The amount of piperine crystals collected at the bottom will increase by this way. And we continue to add more water until no longer sediments forming in the beaker. Water as much as three times of the alcoholic solution will suffice for this process, that is 300-400 milliliters of water. When the process is over, the container is placed in the refrigerator and the crystals are thoroughly formed for 24 hours. After 24 hours, there should be enough piperine paracipiate in the bottom of the beaker which is taken out from the refrigerator. Now you can separate and dry the piperine paracipiate from the main solution. We will do vacuum filtration using a Buckner funnel and flask for this. Put Buckner funnel on the conical flask. and carefully place filter paper inside. Apply vacuum now. Do not forget to wet the filter paper with a small amount of cold water so that filter paper can stick well to the base of the funnel. We slowly pour the solution into the funnel. Transfer piperine paracipiate to the filter with the aid of a spatula. And wash the beaker a few times with cold water to prevent mechanical piperine loss.
and continue vacuuming for a while to absorb as much liquid as possible in the piperine. At this time, you can help to keep the liquid dry by gently mixing the piperine precipitate with the spatula. Move smoothly at this moment. The filter paper should not be torn. At the end, carefully remove the filter paper from the final and dry the moist piperine in oven at 40 degrees. You can store dry piperine crystals in a desiccator or container with silica gel in it. Weigh the well-dried piperine with the precision scale. The amount I have obtained is 2.7 grams. This yield may vary depending on the methods you use. You can keep the product in a bottle with dehumidifier inside.